All right. Well, welcome everyone to this teacher made webinar. My name is Jen and I am the sales manager here at teacher made in the room with me today are my teammates, Matt and Nathan. They will be manning the Q and a. So if at any time during this presentation, you have any question, comment, concern, you need me to slow down, whatever the case may be. If you go down to the little three dots in your bottom toolbar and click more, there you will see halfway down the list Q&A. If you could put your questions in the Q&A, Nathan and Matt will make sure that they are addressed in a timely fashion. So TeacherMade is special. It was created by teachers for teachers. And it's the brainchild of our CEO, Laura Bresco, as the amount of time, you know, as a solution to the amount of time she was having to, you know, stand in line at the copy machine or grading student work while she was in the classroom herself. So the purpose of today's, I almost said less than, the purpose of today's webinar, can you tell I'm a teacher? I, a little bit of background about me. I am a 30 year veteran high school science teacher and I came to work for TeacherMade. So, so I just am in the habit of saying the purpose of this lesson is to introduce you to TeacherMade and show you how to create an activity and then also to add those digital interactions to your activity. That's Teacher Made 101. And hopefully my mate Kate will be joining us very, very soon. We do recommend that if you are taking Teacher Made 101 and you are brand spanking new to the application, that you do register for Teacher Made 102 because that is going to show you everything assigning, grading, and feedback. So with that being said, I will go ahead and share my screen with you and we will learn how to create a teacher made activity. So can you all see my screen? Nathan, can you see my screen, Matt? Perfect. Sure can. Sure can. All right. Fantastic. So when you first come into teachermade.com, you should log in with your email and your Word that you have created, um, and you will simply click log in to TeacherMade. And when, if you have never used TeacherMade before, this is going to be the landing page that you come to. We like to call this our digital file cabinet. Um, we all know as teachers that you know organization is just key to everything. It keep, keeps us sane, right? So in this area, if you've never used TeacherMade before, you will have nothing here. You'll just have, you know, the top toolbar here, the name, the created, updated. You can see here that I have several folders. I am a science teacher, so I've got anatomy, biology, chemistry, and earth science down here. Um, and if you you can create folders here using this new folder, but if you click inside one of these folders, you can see here I have further created more folders for organization by topic within my subject area. So we just give you these little tools to help you be successful and to be organized in your creation of your teacher made activities. So first step in creating an activity is to upload your PDF into teacher made. So do that by creating, I click on create new activity and you have some choices. You can upload an existing file, uh, you know, with either JPEG, PNG, a GIF or, you know, PDF or dot dots um, and, or you can start blank. For our purposes today, I am going to just drag a PDF that I already have loaded, downloaded onto my computer. I'm going to drag it and I'm going to drop it in this area and we wait for the document to populate. Now here we have some options. You can choose to upload all of the slides or you can upload just a specific slide depending on the function of your document that you have. Then you have even more choices. So back when TeacherMade first came out, when you uploaded a PDF into the application, it uploaded as one long scrolling document. So your students would start at the top of the page and just continue to scroll through, completing the interactions as they went. Well, in 2023, uh, teacher made developers actually recognized that, you know, teachers use a lot of different, um, you know, versions of their content. I specifically use uh, Google Slides. 
and I have a lot of my content loaded on Google Slides. So TeacherMate said, huh, you know what? Let's go ahead and give our teachers options. So instead of loading just one specific long scrolling document, we can now upload these slides. So for our purposes today, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to upload as I'm going to select slides. You can, you can select whichever one you prefer. So I am going to use slides. And then I simply create, click create activity. And once you create that activity, the PDF gets uploaded into TeacherMade as a background image. And you kind of use, uh, you use TeacherMade as an overlay and you add your interactions on top of that overlay. I like to describe this as the old school um, overhead projectors where you could put a transparency over the flat um, screen on the, the transparency, the overhead projector, and then you can write on top of that transparency. That's pretty much what we're doing here in TeacherMate. So I uploaded my PDF and you can see here, it looks fairly familiar. It looks just like Google Slides. However, it does not have the functionality as that Google Slides have. So if you find something um, that you need to change on one of your background slides, you actually have to go into the original document change it, and then you can re-upload it. Because once you click somewhere on here, you will see our pop-up menu. And our pop-up menu does show you all of the different item types that TeacherMade has. So you have all of these different typical question tools that your students will get, are going to run into throughout the course of these activities. We've separated our math tools out just for ease of use. And then we also have additional con tools over here so you can further interact with the content and make it more um, engaging for your student. So one thing I do want to say about this over here looks very similar to Google Slides. Yeah, you can click on a slide to advance yourself. You can even drag slides to rearrange the order of the presentation that you are going to deploy to your students. So questions before I get into the actual item type creation? Not yet. Fantastic. OK, so this happens to be a 19 slide. I know that's a that's a large number, but this happens to be a 19 slide presentation. And we are going to go through all 19 slides. And like I said before, um, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out through that Q&A and Matt and Nathan will take care of those for us. But each one of these slides deals with one of those specific item types. And one of the things that you're going to see me do quite often today is click and highlight. And there's a reason for that. And it's just going to just become second nature for you while you are creating these interactions. So I'm going to start with our matching. And our matching item types, this just says match each capital city with its state. Fantastic. So I am going to click and highlight Atlanta. And when I let go, that pop-up menu pops in. And I will simply select matching. Now you saw a couple things happen here. Atlanta turned red and it has those little blue squares around it. And those little blue squares are important because that indicates that you can edit and manipulate that specific item. So I can come up here to my toolbar and I can adjust the points. I can click the little blue edit button where I can also adjust the points. So it, it gives you, it just gives you some functionality. It just those little blue, those little blue squares give you, gives you functionality within the item. So I know that Atlanta is the capital of Georgia. So I'm also going to highlight Georgia and I'm going to select matching. And again, you see the red with the little blue dots. Now, one of the great things about TeacherMate is that auto scoring. All of those item types that are on this particular pop-up menu, the math tools and the question tools, those are auto-graded. And as you create the interactions for your students, you actually create the answer key for the auto-scoring. So in order to do that for your matching, you have to make sure that one of these little boxes has those blue dots around it. So I'm going to click on Atlanta, and then all I have to do is hover over Georgia and you saw that dotted line pop in there. All I need to do is now click on Georgia and I've created 
the the match and you can see everybody turned blue and the different the dotted line connects the two and then all i have to do is simply complete the rest of them so get them hovered click matching make the match go ahead and click matching highlight and click and make the match how simple was creating this matching item type absolutely amazingly simple it took me all of once i got started it took me all of maybe 15 seconds to create these this item type our second item type that we are going to talk about is our drop down menu and so again i click where i want the action to take place on the the document for the students and i select drop down and it brings me to this edit drop down menu very simple we create our answer key at the same time as we enter the answers that our students are going to see when they click on that little down arrow so my mom work in an office i don't want that capitalized my mom work in an office worked in an office she works in an office and i am going to go ahead and click the correct answer now as that teacher um, of 30 years when i would make my tests a lot of times i would go ahead and put my first the correct answer in that first answer blank and my students would catch on to that so we have this nice handy dandy little pull your order over here and you can actually shuffle where the students are going to see the answer choice within the list and then i can save my changes you might notice that the font size is a little small here up in my toolbar I can actually change my font size to match the other items that I have in this paragraph. Now, one of the things that I do get asked quite often is, do you have to have an answer blank in your paragraph in order to use the drop down? The answer is absolutely not. All you have to do is pick a word, highlight it, select down, and put in the correct word that you want your students to choose from and then save your choice. And then you can size it so they can see the whole, the whole word, okay? Our short answer functions very similarly to the drop down. So I'm only gonna do one of these for you. So again, I highlight where I want interaction. I go ahead and enter short answer. I enter in all versions of the answer that my students i will accept as correct sometimes students click that um, the caps lock and they forget and they don't they don't realize it so i'm going to just put in all of my answers that i will accept as correct and i save my changes and then i fix my font any questions so far Yes, hi, Jen. We do have one question more about the webinar than about TeacherMade. Mm -hmm. At the end, will there be a handout from this, or should I try and write all this down? Oh, no, don't write it all down. We at TeacherMade are all about working smarter, not harder. So at the end of this webinar, I will provide you with a PDF of this training uh, that you are seeing right here. And then I will also provide to you the uh, link to this recording. So if you need to watch again, you can watch at your own pace and then go ahead and follow along in the training. So please don't worry about writing all of this stuff down. I am throwing a lot of information at you today, and there's, there's no way we expect you to memorize and write down every single statement that, I, that I'm talking about. Okay. So thank you for that. All right. So our true false, and I love the true false, um, only because in science, I will use the true false, not necessarily as true false, but as a, an acid or a base, or I use it in, uh, you know, biology as heterotroph or autotroph. So it gives, just gives me a little bit, and I'll show you how to do that in two seconds. So I click and I highlight, and I select true false. And whoop, now you can see that it came up as acid and base. So one of the things about t is it remembers your last interaction with the item type. So the last interaction that I had with this item type was on our previous 101 training, and I showed them how to customize the labels. So if I don't want this to say acids and bases, and you can size them 
make them large, make them small. You can stack them on top of each other if that's what you would prefer to do if you don't like them horizontal. But in order to change this from acid and base back to true false, I need to come up here to my toolbar and I click right here, the label, the true false label. And you can see that I have custom checked there. And this comes in handy for your ELL students, or if you teach a world language, or if you are you know, using a different language in your instruction, you can actually put in um, home language labels for this specific item type. But I'm gonna go ahead and click true false. And again, at the same time as I create the, the item type, I create my answer key, as long as there are those little blue dots around it. Our multiple choice, this is probably the most well-known interaction item type that is out there. Everybody uses multiple choice. So again, highlight where you want your, your radio buttons to be, select multiple choice, See, again, it remembered my last interaction. We do the option of the two by two answer choices that you can size to however you need and stretch them out. But I don't want two by two, so I can change that up here in my toolbar. I can change it to just four answers or how many ever, however many answers your, your room has. And then you can see that the orientation isn't quite right. It's horizontal and I need it to be vertical. So all I need to do is click on that corner and drag it down. And then my items become horizontal. I can size them the way I want them as long as they are highlighted in those little blue dots. You could leave it out here on the side. I don't particularly like the numbers one, two, three, four. And again, we at TeacherMate are all about options for you. So if you don't like one, two, three, four, but you're okay with having there's no answer choice, you can go ahead and slide those radio buttons right over those numbers and create answer key. However, if you do prefer letters, you can, whoops, can as long as that is highlighted in the little blue boxes, you can come up here to your toolbar, so letters, all you have to do is click and you can choose from these different letter combinations, or you can revert back to numbers. If I wanted to pick A, B, C, D, there I go. And let me show you, demonstrate again. It remembers, teacher made remembers your last interaction. Our checkbox, also known as multi-select, super similar to the multiple choice. You highlight, you select the number of boxes, of check boxes up here. You have eight check boxes. You can have, you know, seven, six, five, all the way down to one check box. This one just has five check boxes. And while it's highlighted in blue, you go ahead and select the correct answers. Again, every time you create an interaction, you set the answer key with the exception of our open answer, which is our next item type. So open answer is for like extended responses, essay questions, and there is no possible way that we at TeacherMate can predict what students are going to type for the answer to an open answer question. So it's this is not uh, an auto graded item type. However, we do like to say that it is assisted grading because now you can um, apply points or you know put points associated with an open answer. So to create your open answer, you highlight, you select open answer. Um, and I wanna point this out. This area right here, this is where your students are going to put in their answers. We do not have rubrics at this moment. It is on our wish list. TeacherMade has all of the features it has today because suggestions from users like you um, and we are in the process of, you know, compiling a list. We've got so many things on our wish list, and rubrics is one of them. So don't type anything in this box because this is where your students will type. However, you can up here in the toolbar, you can select those number of points that you want to associate with the open answer. Now you can, if you want to help your students start their essay, 
up in the toolbar, you have you see this little blue edit button. You can put in here starter text. The lock and key hypothesis is, and I can save my changes. And when my students see this, and I'm going to show you something now that I do recommend you check quite often throughout your um, experience in creating these documents is our preview. It's the little computer with the eyeball up here in our toolbar. And if I click preview, this is going to kind of give you an idea of what your students will see. So it says here, explain what is by the lock and key hypothesis for enzymes. And I have here a leading text. The lock and key hypothesis is, but if your students click in here, they can start typing their own and that leading text does disappear. So it just gives them a little bit of a heads up as to what you're expecting them to, to start out with. Our math functions, questions before I start with our math functions. I'm, I'm going kind of fast, I feel, and I, I wanna make sure I'm answering any kinds of questions. Currently, we don't have any open questions. Fantastic. Okay, so our math functions. So we do have our separate out, we separated out the math functions, and I'm not going to demonstrate all these because they are very similar to one another, but I will show you our number interaction. So we moved over here into this section right here, and this is a number answer. And then I put in every version of the number that I will accept as uh, correct. I can allow commas, I can allow pluses and minuses and negatives and allow decimals. So save your chis. Again, the font's not quite as large as I would like it to be for the activity. So I go ahead and change it. And then I size down. Same thing with our fractions. Our fractions are kind of a cool interaction. You just simply put in here the, um, the correct answer. Um, every single math teacher I've had in my entire life has told me, Jennifer, you need to make sure that you simplify your fractions to the, you know, to the simplest form. So this is what I'm doing here. But if you have students that sometimes skip over the directions and you want to nice to them, and you can go ahead and add all possible answers that you will accept as true, as correct. And I'm going to see that down just a little bit to make it look a little bit more normal in line with the, the question. So we do, like I said, recommend that you check that preview so you are creating your items the way you like them. Okay, so our math expressions. This is for our, our upper level math, starting you know, with the algebras. So here is our math, and I am going to right here click on algebra and formula. And you're, this is where you would answer your, the specific, you'd put the correct answer. But watch what happens when I go in to add my expression you get our equation editor. We have three different equation editors for you. This happens to be our basic equation editor. This is not a calculator. This is simply for your students to use the numbers and the variables and all of the other different functions that you might find at some of those lower level math. Um, you know, to me, they're, I'm not a math person, admittedly. Um, so this, I, I would use this one. If you click on the, the F, the functions, you will see our more ad advanced math functions. And some of this is, I don't know what some of this is. I know that this is factorial. What, there's factorial in here somewhere. There's fractions again. Um, you know, I don't have a whole lot of information or usage in here for my subject matter. However, right here, this is where I live. This is my science stuff. So I've got my delta for change. I've got my forward and reverse reactions for chemistry. You've got, you know, wavelength and, and all that fun stuff in there for your, um, for your upper level sciences. So here I am going to go ahead and um, put in my expression 18x squared plus 18 and save my changes. Now, one of the things I do want to point out here, and I have this balance the chemical equation here, simply because I want to demonstrate to you that you don't have to use 
these numbers and only these letters. Because a lot of math people, they like to use more variables than just the letters X and Y. You can actually use your keyboard to put in um, the actual answers that you need. And then I'm gonna hop over here, click, and we come back here. And you, I am just using, you don't see any letters in that equation editor. So you, I just wanna to demonstrate to you that you can go ahead and I didn't see, I made a, an oopsie boo boo. I can very simply go back in there and make a change to my answer key uh, because we're fallible. We are, we're teachers, we're human. We do make mistakes. So we can always go back and make corrections. Our hotspot, right now our hotspot is either you click it for the correct answer or you leave it unclicked. I use hotspots all the time in science because I use a lot of di different diagrams. I use them for ringers. I use them for, um, you know, exit tickets. So I would highlight where I want my hotspot interaction. I click and now I have to send my answer key. Right up here in our toolbar, right here is clicked or unclicked. So here the butterfly, the adult butterfly does not use the, the leaf as its food source. And then I would just continue to do that for every single hotspot. And hit hotspot. This one does need to be clicked. That is the correct answer. And I need one more for chrysalis. And I click. Questions on hotspot before we move on to, or any questions before we move on to the drag and drop? We have no open questions at the moment. All right. Drag and drop, probably one of the most requested item types that we had. Um, and this is one of my favorites to use in science. So there are three steps. Everything else is pretty much two steps. Highlight, set the answer key, you're done. Drag and drop has three different steps. So step number one is going to be create the draggable. And that's the thing that the student, the item that the student is going to click on and move to a different spot on the, the document. So here we go. I'm going to step number one, create my draggable. To do that, I come up here to my toolbar and I click the snipping tool. This is our little scissors. It's our snipping tool. One thing I wanna point out, please make sure that you have both of these little check boxes checked. Um, I, when I was learning how to do the drag and drop, I made the most beautiful normal cell drag and drop and this little check box was not checked and my, my activity didn't work. So please, please make sure that this is checked. So I, I click my sniffing bowl, I make sure that these two things are checked and I come down here to my answer choices here. So I know that I need to do oink. Oink is my last item that I need to create as a draggable and I highlight. Now the telltale sign correctly created my draggable is this itty bitty finger in the top left corner of the box. So now you can see I have all of my draggables because they are all now they've got this nice little um, square around them. You don't have the square if you don't want to. You come up here to your toolbar, this little pencil, that's our border color. You can have no border. Um, I personally like the border because it just indicates that your students have to do something with that particular item. So step number one was to create my draggable. I've done that. Step number two is to create drop zone. This is where the, the student is going to drop that draggable that they're moving to a different place on the activity. So to do that, again, I, can I highlight, I click drop zone, and you can see that now I have a square on my, on my activity that has a little gray flag in the top left corner. That is my drop zone. So now I create my answer key. So step one was create the draggable. Step number two, create the drop zone. Step number three, create my answer key. So while the drop zone or the um, draggable is highlighted in those little blue boxes, I hover over where the correct answer is. I press shift key and I left click my mouse. 
Now you should have seen this little, that little flag at the beginning in this drop zone turned blue. That is your indication as the teacher that you have an answer associated with that drop zone. And that's it. It is super easy to create that drag and drop. One of the new item types that we've just come out with in the past few months is the ability to embed a video for your students to watch right there in front of them. In the past, you could link in a video and if the students click the link, it would open up the video in another tab and they could watch that video. Now they can do the video watching right there on the document as long as you have enough room for it. Well, actually, TeacherMate has a workaround if you don't. So here I want my students to watch a video on Uncle Donald's Farm. And I'm going to utilize one of these content tools and I'm going to click on video. And my video display comes up and I have a couple of choices. I have an inline choice and I have a floating choice. The inline choice is perfect if you have enough room on your document to have the students watch the video right there. So you select which display mode you, you like to use, and then you put in your URL for the video and click save. And then you can watch the video. Your students can watch the video right on the page. But you can see here, my students don't have quite enough room to, to watch the whole screen video. That is where the floating choice comes into play. And I'll show you the diff here between the floating and the inline choice. So the floating, if you don't have quite enough room for your students to watch the video right there on the page, they can have this little button that says watch video. And if I come up here to my preview, see how there's, it just looks a little cramped right there for the for the students if i want my students to watch the whole video and see the whole thing i pick the floating and it opens the video up into the the side blank space and it plays there for your students so they can see the whole screen so a nice little nice little perk okay we also have the ability for your students to um add audio and teachers can also add audio to their um, interactivities for their students and that comes in handy especially if you've got students with accommodations that need to have items read to them or um, if you have an ell student that that you want to provide them with a translation whatever the case may be you can record as the teacher up to five minutes and as many audio audio files onto and attach them to your document as many as you need to have your students can also do the same type of thing they can create an audio up to two minutes and they can attach it to their documents as well so to do that they would they would click audio and so would you as the teacher you would click start and you record yourself up to five minutes right here in the 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 document in the editor here you will go ahead and click stop you can listen to it and then you would click if you're happy with it you click add audio to your activity and then you would see this little box right here and you can drag it around onto your document or the the interactivity as much as you want to okay so i'm going to go ahead and get out of there and our newest feature is our teacher text box we just well the teacher text box has been around but we came out with rich teacher text so now you do have the ability to add images to your document um and this this little piggy there's the picture of the piggy went to market and i can go ahead and highlight this whole thing i can make the, uh, the font large. I can change the color of the font. Let's go ahead and make this purple. I like purple and a bold face it. Oh, and you know what? I'm just for the fun of it, I'm gonna change it to Comic Sans. There we go. So when you save this onto your um, interactivity, 
you it looks it it looks just like it was in the editor. Okay, so I am now to pause for questions because these next five item types, and this is, we've got five more to talk about real quick. Um, these five item types are created a little bit differently. So do we have questions or comments before we move on to the last five? We do not have any at the moment. Okay. So in the previous 12 slides that we have been working with, you can see that I have content already created on the page. And I've added the interactions to the existing content on the pages. Well, our five most recent item types, you, you create them just a little bit differently. Uh, so in these next five, you actually will use blank space or additional slides to your presentation to create the, act, the, the um, items and the content directly in TeacherMade. It is, however, helpful if you create the directions for each item type prior to loading in the document so the backgrounds of the slides look the same. So you can see here, I have uploaded a TeacherMade hot text. This is one of our newer item types released sometime I think March ish of this of this year, but you can see here that there's no content on here. Um, I do have the directions I do I identify all of the nouns in the sentence boom there are my directions, however, the content creation. Is done directly in teacher made so you enter in I went. To, to the store and I bought a loaf of bread, a stick of butter, and a container of milk, period. I'm gonna increase the font size. So I've got my question, I've got my sentence right here, and I wanna create hot text. And hot text is the type of item type where your students will click on specific words and they are highlighted within the sentence. Or if you have um, a reading passage that you already have typed out, you can actually, you don't have to retype the entire reading passage into this particular area, you can copy and paste. Um, so you please don't think that you have to type, retype a you know 14 paragraph reading essay into this. If you've already got it typed as a Word document, just copy and paste it right in here. But we do have to create an answer key. And to do that, I simply highlight and I click hot text. And you can see here that these words get populated down below where I will select certain words to be the correct answer. Um, so now I've got all of my nouns and I have to now put in some distractors for my students. So let me just, you know, highlight um, a couple more of these words. There's some adjectives. I got a couple of verbs in here. I'll go ahead and put all of these. Whoops. I'll go ahead and put all of these words in here. I've got all of my words populated down here in the hot text. And now I have to create the answer key. So I simply check next to the different nouns, this specific list, and I click save. And your sentence pops in here. And if you wanna take a preview, because you're probably looking at going, Jennifer, they are highlighted in different colors. Your students don't see those different colors. They will only see the specific one specific color and it they click on the correct answer. Okay. Our inline choice, same type of thing. Select the correct the correct verb to complete the sentence. So I highlight, I click inline choice, and I start entering. Um, Steve, and I'm gonna put in a drop down, ran, run running and I make sure that I have my first my, the correct answer checked home from school and I'm going to add another drop down play playing played and played with his dog again I'm going to increase my font size and click 
save. Now, you can always resize this. If you would rather have all the drop downs on the same line, you can go ahead and do that. So your students now will see the question. Steve, select he ran home from school and he played with his dog. Match table grid um, is our next one. I use this often in my biology classes. Using the table, classify each word as either a verb or a noun. Again, the stem is in here already, but you see any content. It's because you create the content within TeacherMade. So I highlight, I select match table grid. I can select my font size. And here you will start putting in, okay, this is, should be a noun and a verb. I can add columns by simply at clicking on the plus sign. I can delete columns by clicking on the little X. And then on the side here, um, we have flip-flop um, t-shirt. I'm going to add a row. Ran, oops, ran. Add another row, short, shorts. And then one more just for the fun of it, swim. And then you will go ahead and classify and set your answer key and then click save. You may have to resize just depending on how large you want the, the, the match table grid to appear for your students. Two more we have to go through and these are our most recent math releases. These are the graphing. Uh, you can either plot your points or you plot your lines. And you can see here it says plot the following points on the grid. And I've provided these before I created the item type. So I come here under math tools, I select graph plotting. Now, this is our edit graph plotting screen. You can Select the number, you can select whether or not you want to have your students plot points or plot lines. This one happens to plot points. We are going to plot four of them, so I'm going to put it at four points. You can edit the number, the numbers that you see on the X axis and the Y axis. So I am going to put X is three, Y is negative two, and I'm going to add that point. I need a negative five and a zero. I'm going to add that point. And you can see the points coming in here um, onto the graph as I click add point. So you need to make sure that you are clicking add point after each time you enter in the, the coordinates for your specific graph. So these are the ones that I'm going to have my student plot because they were on that specific chart. And I click save. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, you know, I don't want my students to see those. Again, in the preview, your students are not going to see those. All they have to do is click and they will add the points. It's negative five, zero, negative three, four. I am not a math person, but I think I got things right. OK, so they just have to and if they make a mistake, they just reclick on that same point and it goes away. And our last item type that we are talking about today in TeacherMade 101 is our graphing the line. So for this, I'm asking my students to do two, two different things. They first have to calculate the value of Y for a given value of X. And to me, I am going to use that as a number. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to create for every X is zero, Y is one. And for Y, or X being one, Y is going to be four, okay? And then you come in here and you select again, graph plot. But this time we need to graph a line and I've got, this is going to be worth four points just because I want it to be. Again, you can manipulate the numbers that you have on your X and your Y axis. You can choose to graph the Y using the M at Y equals MX plus B or for our purposes with specific points. So when X is zero, Y should be one. When X is one, Y should be four. And I'm going to add my line and then click save. 
And again, your students are not going to see that line. They are only going to see the interaction where they will actually come in here now. Oops, let's see. They will come in, they will enter their, their score and then y is zero, that means y is one and then x is one and y is four and then it will add that line for them. So that is how you create a teacher made digital activity from your PDFs. You upload it and then you add the interaction. So we've gone through all of our different item types. Do we have any questions uh, as far as the uploading of a document or the addition of interactions to the to a specific activity? We don't have any questions at the moment, so let me take the opportunity to explain how to ask a question. I think most people have caught the Q&A tool at the bottom, but you may need to move your mouse over the screen. Zoom sometimes hides the toolbar from you. So move your mouse and you should see the Zoom toolbar at the very bottom. And there are a couple of little uh, cartoon dialog boxes there that are labeled Q&A. And just click on that and it'll open up a little window. You can type your questions and I will see them and be able to answer them. Ah, thank you, Matt. We'll just give a like a minute or so uh, to, to answer, ask any questions that you may have. Again, I do want to reiterate that at the end of this, we are going to give you a certificate of, of attendance for professional development purposes. We are also going to provide you with this training PDF that you just saw me go through, and then also a copy of the recording that is taking place today. So you can watch, stop, practice, rewind if you need to, fast forward if you feel confident with moving forward uh, with the content. So do we have any additional questions? Can you review how you save your document and put it in a file? Sure. So number one, whenever I do any kind of activity, um, say I'm going to put in a matching here, watch the top corner up here. You just saw that information. That information, your information and interactions are saved every few seconds while you are completing your document. So you don't have to worry about you know, hit uh, control S to save anything. It is automated. See, you just saw it up there. Watch up there. And let me do that one more time for I you. I don't think you're sharing your screen at the moment, Jen. Oh, I'm not showing. I'm not sharing my screen. Thanks, Matt. Let me see if I can start sharing my screen again. I am so sorry. Here I am thinking I'm showing you something. Okay. Now you can see my screen, right? Yes. All right. So I'm going to just pretend that I'm going to add another matching item type. Now watch up here in this blue bar, okay? Um, I'm gonna add a matching item type and you'll see in a few seconds, saving saved. That happens every few seconds. Watch it again, it'll saving and then it'll say saved. Um, and then to title it, you don't wanna ever forget to title your activity. So there it goes, saving saved. So if I go back here to my digital file cabinet, my activities, you can see here I have untitled activity. That is the activity that I just showed you when to up, how to upload your document. So I'm going to go ahead and just title this um, webinar upload. And I'm going to save it. So I go back to my digital file cabinet here you will see webinar upload. If I want to create a folder, I click new folder and I name my folder. Um, let's see, teacher made 101 webinar. And I'm going to click confirm. And you can see that my teacher made 101 webinar folder was added to my list. And if I want to add a document to a specific folder, webinar, I can click on the three dots and it can, I can say move activity and I can move my activity to whatever folder that I choose and I click confirm and I'm going to close. And now you can see there's a little shift in my screen 
And if I go to teacher made webinar, if I hover over, you can see I have one activity in that particular folder. If I click on that folder, there's my webinar upload. So, and I can always follow little breadcrumbs uh, string back to my home screen. I can also, if I really want to, I can click and I can drag. If you don't want to use the three little webinar, the three little dots on the right here. So now you see my folder is updated the number of activities that are in it. If I click on that folder, there's my teacher made item type creation that I just went through with you today. I don't want to leave that there because I don't want to lose it. I want, oh, you know what? I can make a copy. So I'm going to make a copy of this particular activity. And I'm going to put it in my home folder and I'm going to copy my activity. So if I go back to my activities, my, my digital file cabinet here, here I see teacher made item type creation copy. You know what? I don't like that. Um, I don't like that title. I don't like the word copy there. So I'm going to go ahead and fix it just by renaming it and deleting that copy and clicking save. And then again, I can go back to my activities and my teacher made item type creation is saved on my home screen. So you can make multiple copies. I have specifically in my biology, I have um, lab equipment functions and functions in biology. I have a copy of it in my lab equipment and functions in my chemistry folder. So if you have multiple creations, multiple activities that you use through several different disciplines, you can make multiple copies. So you don't have to recreate the wheel. Again, TeacherMate is all about working smarter, not harder. So we, we only make those copies. So you don't have to, to reinvent the wheel for every single class that you need that activity for. I hope that answered your question. That was a great answer, Jen. Can you show us the search function? I can. So down here, this is one of the new search. This is one of our newer feature releases. Down here on the left hand side is search. And you can actually search by title. So you have some different filters here. You can um, search by whether or not it's been assigned, whether or not it's been shared, the creation date or um, the last date it was modified. So let me go ahead and search for lab equipment and functions. Search. Hmm, didn't like, there we go. So it has now gone ahead and it said, okay, it's located in, and look at all these that have lab equipment. So see, I. I've done quite a bit with lab equipment, but it kind of groups them all together and it kind of narrows down your search. I do have, if I typed something in here that said teacher made, I don't know if it would have, let's see, search. And you can see here, now these are the things that have teacher made in the title. So it just narrows that search and makes things easier for you to find, okay? Let's see. Anything else? We currently do not have any questions. All right. Well, fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for spending this hour with us. We do appreciate it. If you have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to reach out to us. We, you know, pretty much use our first names, Jen at teachermade.com, Matt at teachermade.com, Nate at teachermade.com. Nate, are you Nathan or Nate? I think it's Nathan. Nathan at teachermade.com. And Kate was able to join us. She is our customer success manager. She is Kate at teachermade.com. Okay. Anything else before we sign off? Just thank yous. Uh, well, thanks, everyone. You have a fantastic afternoon. Bye-bye.